Hello and welcome to another purveyor of light photo mechanic tip. Uh, today we're going to cover the crop tool inside of uh, photo mechanic. And uh, so we'll take you a walk through for that and uh, we'll just go ahead and jump right in. All right, as we know, uh, cropping is a, an important factor to any photography workflow. And uh, getting the proper crop is, is vital to that. So let me just pick a photo here. To, to open up the crop tool, just go ahead and uh, double click on the photo. And that will open it up in a bigger screen here. And um, so the crop tool is over here on the right side. If it's collapsed, you can just hit the triangle here to open up the, the dialog box. So let's cover over each one of the controls. And uh, then we'll dive in deeper on each one. All right, so the first thing is turning on or off the crop tool. Okay, if we turn that on, we turn it off. Very simple. Okay, so uh, then copy. If we want to copy a crop from one photo to another or paste a crop into one to the other, or we want to clear any existing crops. So example, if I turn around and I say, okay, I want to crop this and I draw this out, I can sit there and go, oh, I don't want that and just hit clear and that clears the crop uh the other thing is uh viewing the crop okay that lets us see the crop okay so if i turn around and do this and i say view the crop and now you can see it restricts the view of it now bear in mind everything within photo mechanic is non-destructive so we don't ever delete pixels we just actually restrict what's viewed okay so you can always recover or change your crop anytime you wish, okay? And you can, if you want to view it, you can just simply view how your crop looks this way. But you always have the unedited image available to you. Um, another nice feature is this full button. Um, a lot of times you just want to have the maximum size available to you given the crop and you can just hit full and it will give you the maximum size that would cover for the image for cropping, okay? Uh, settings, okay? This one you'll probably get into. This one here is shield the area outside the crop. That's basically what we're looking for. I'm gonna cancel this here, and I'm gonna make a very small crop, right? Just for demonstration purposes, okay? So let's, you see the uh, darkened area outside of the crop? That's the shaded area, right? So that's the shield outside the crop. And that changes the opacity. So if you like your uh, cropping to be a little darker, you can uh, increase this uh, slider right here, or you could decrease it if you want to have it done. Okay? So if I want to turn around and I drop this all the way down and I hit OK, you can see how light it's made, the shield. If I want to increase it, OK, I can come in and now I have increased the shield. And that's a personal preference setting. OK, all right, back into settings. We could show the grid overlay, OK? And that's if you want a grid to show up on it. Uh, if you want a center point here uh, for your crop, you can turn that on or off, and you can have grid lines, okay? Now, the, this is probably the area you're going to be using with most. If you want an unrestrained crop, which means you could crop any way you wish, just simply hit normal, and then you can grab your handles and uh, virtually crop any shape or size how you want. All right, so the, the next thing is, but a lot of times we want to have a predefined ratio for the crop, maybe an 8 by 10, maybe a 4 by 5, maybe a 9 by 12. Uh, and if we do have a need to have a predefined one under settings, we can set that. And we can we constrain this, the crop. Let's say you want a square crop. So you just go one to one, right? And that will give you an absolute perfect square. And that's very popular for like uh, Instagram. Okay, so there it changes it to the thing. And now I can come in and do my 
thing, and it's restrained to a square, okay? And if I want to have the maximum size, let's say I did this and I go, I want to see what the max is, I can hit full, and it's going to give me the maximum, okay? So that full button comes in handy for cropping, all right? Okay, so now you have your settings, and let's say you want to use this over and over again for future references because you know you're going to do one-to-one. -one. You can hit the lightning bolt here, okay? The lightning bolt is just simply a way to take a snapshot and save it. So we take that and we go, well, then we want to save it. It's going to then say, all right, give it a name, and we're going to call it uh, square, all right? And hit OK. And there we go. And now, if we ever want to use this square again, okay, for any purpose, we just hit the lightning bolt, and there is our square preset. There's an 8x10 portrait, uh, and it, see, it changes the dimensions automatically, so you can pre-save them. And you can build up a collection. Okay, I have here a Instagram Reel set preset. I have click that and then it automatically sizes it to be that way now here's a good example of where the crop is going in the wrong direction okay i want it to be up and down and change the dimensions easy way to do that is just simply notice how the cursor is a hand when i'm inside the square crop so i could drag the, the frame around if i want to change the ratio to a whole different thing or rotate it, I just come outside of it. And then you see how it changes to a little circular arrow. And now the grid comes in and I can rotate the image however I wish, okay? If I wanna go lengthwise or however I wanna do this, all right? And so I could change it that way. Um, you'll notice too that we're rotating the grid not the picture, okay? That throws off a lot of people a lot because, you know, like if you're using, familiar with using Lightroom and, and things like that, it works the opposite way. It actually rotates the actual image, uh, whereas a photo mechanic actually moves the grid around the image, okay? It's a matter of semantics. It's all the same. The end results are the same, okay? And if I want to see what it would look like cropped, I just bring it in there and it'll automatically rotate and crop uh, based on that. Okay? All right. So, we've covered that. We've covered the settings. And uh, the other thing here is now I'm going to, let me just put a uh, normal crop on this. Let's do a landscape 8x10 and do a full. Okay, so let's just say now that this is a a crop that I wanted to use, and now I want to distribute it. Maybe I want to upload it to one of my online services. Maybe I want to unload, upload it to Flickr or, or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to close this up. And now, if you look at this, you can see the, the uh, dotted dash around the image. That's showing the, the crop. Okay, and that's letting you know it's got a prop defined. And when we go and we say we want to upload to the photo, whether we want to FTP it or move it, upload the photo, you'll see that under the options right down here is we can apply the crop. And that means when this uh, photo is uploaded to an online service, uh, Photo Mechanic will automatically apply the crop when it's doing the upload for you. All right, so it's a nice little feature that it automatically crops on exporting. All right, so there you go. That is basically the crop tool within Photo Mechanic. It's an easy tool to master. It comes in and invaluable in many situations. And uh, that'll do it for this week. Till next week, you guys take care.